When we do a feng shui assessment of a house, one of the things that we pay particular attention to is how the interiors are designed. This is important because it determines how energy flows into the house, how it flows within the house and how it eventually leaves the house. Because home designers usually design homes with practicality and aesthetics in mind, it's actually very common to find properties with floor plans that is akin to a feng shui disaster. On this floor plan, we're going to find numerous feng shui afflictions, and among many, it includes the infamously and repulsively named heart piercer, or some call it the sword through the heart shaft. This is an example of how this feng shui affliction takes shape on the property, and I will show you how we pacify it. But that's just scratching the surface of what's going on in this property. So are you ready? Let's go. jargon used throughout this video and if there is a word, phrase or verse that you are not familiar with, do check out the description below which I'll probably try to link to places where it explains what this uh, jargon means. Now as we enter the house from the front door, you can see straight away that there's an energy tunnel here that runs right through the house, from the door into the hall, through the dining area and out back to the rear of the house. It actually slashes right through the dining table, which is uh, not very good for family harmony. This particular affliction is sometimes known as the fork. It is generally bad for households, especially in the aspect of uh, wealth accumulation. To remedy this problem, we can actually seal this window here, so that it stops the energy from going in and straight out of the house. If we don't want to seal this window, then maybe you can install blinds or curtains that will probably have to be permanently closed. If we want to keep the window open and not seal it, we will probably have to build a barrier either here or here, so that it serves the same purpose of blocking energy from going in and straight out of the house. Now this is also a good idea because it actually helps to also resolve the heart piercer which I earlier talked about. And at the same time, it helps to remove the corner of this wall here going straight to the front door. If we are to retain this floor plan and do nothing about this area here, then the front door will be exposed to this corner of the wall here. So every day when the homeowner comes home, it will be like being greeted with the blade of an axe right in front of him. We can implement some changes to this area here that can help manage the heart piercer, the energy tunnel, and this edge that's facing the main door. Now later we're going to come to this, but now we're going to go room by room. Right now we're going to enter the hall, we make a left and into the living room area. Okay, amusingly, there's also an energy tunnel here that runs right through the house, from the front windows to the back windows. To resolve this issue, we can just seal this window area over here. Either that or just install some blinds that you will never open. Now as I look at this living room, I can see that there's no ideal space for the sofa to be placed there. So we'll have to select an area that is the lesser of the evils. The sofa set is actually one of the important furniture of the living room because it determines where people are seated in a rested state. And the placement of the TV set plays a huge role in how one places the sofa set. On this current layout, the designer actually has planned for the sofa set to be placed here. This area here. Uh, there's a couch here, so a single seater couch, and the TV set is over here, over here. This is actually not a bad arrangement. In fact, now that I look at it, I think it's probably the most preferable arrangement for the sofa set in this living room. If we want to consider an alternative location for the sofa set, we can probably move it here, this area. 
then we have to move the TV set over here. But when you move the sofa over here, uh, you'll be exposed to this corner of the protruding pillar. So it's still not that desirable compared to the original location. Now as you can see, this pillar here is actually causing a lot of problems. It's not the first time that we are talking about it. And this is actually the hard piercer shard right here. This is a standalone pillar that runs right from the ceiling to the floor of the property and it's right near the center of the property itself. That's why we call it the heart piercer or metaphorically the sword through the heart of the house. The most straightforward way of managing this kind of shachi is to actually remove the shape and form of this pillar. How do we do it? Let me show you. We can actually build a wall over here, this area here. This would effectively prevent the energy tunnel from taking shape and at the same time, it will remove the blade attacking the main door. But from the interiors, we can probably still see that the shape and form of this standalone pillar uh, is still right here. So what we can do is actually set up some water plants in this area or even here all over so that it breaks the shape of the pillar right within the house. The problem with this setup is that when the wall is set up here, it actually blocks the direct access into the dining area and up the stairs. So whenever people come to the house, they will have to walk this way into the living room and into the other living spaces. While some people might find this impractical, it's actually good in that it requires residents to enter the living spaces by the living room. This stimulates more energy into the living room. If residents are to go straight up to their bedrooms when arriving home, the living room can be void of young energy. Either that or it may not be able to harness as much young energy as it can. So I actually think this is a good arrangement for this particular floor plan. Then this would be a good place to hang a painting so they can greet residents with auspiciousness every time they come home. If the homeowner is insistent on having direct access into the dining area, into the kitchen, and right up the stairs, then we might have to build the wall here instead. Then set up the plants here. In any case, you can probably see that the plants in this area is going to play a huge role in breaking the hostile form of this hard piercer. Now we come to the dining area. As you can see, the dining table is over here, but this is an odd shape because as you can see, it is protruding past the wall of this area over here. A better design would be to square up this dining table over here so that it aligns to the wall. Now originally, there's a seat that's planned uh, to be located here. And in the original floor plan, if this seat is left here, you can see that if someone uh, sits on this seat, then his or her back will be exposed to the main door over here. Which is why the wall to be built on this area or this area, as mentioned earlier, will actually play a huge role to mitigate a lot of the feng shui problems that exist on this floor plan. Now on to the kitchen area. This is sink uh, and this is the stove. Now this is a direct confrontation of the sink and stove, a, a clash of uh, fire and water. Now to resolve this conflict, uh, usually we use the presence of wood. So maybe the installation of wooden floors in this area would actually harmonize the conflict between water and fire. If this cannot be done, then you can probably place some wooden items over here or plants so that the wood energy plays the role of harmonizer between water and fire. Now we can also see that the stove is beside the refrigerator over here but there's a considerable gap between them. Now this gap looks to be sufficient to prevent a direct conflict of uh, these two energy forces. It 
However, if you have any doubt as to whether this gap is sufficient, a guide that you can use is to look at the length of your forearm. Let's go to the only bedroom on the ground floor. This bedroom does not have a washroom for itself and has uh, easy access to a common washroom that's right outside the bedroom door. The, the good thing is that this washroom door is not facing the bedroom door, otherwise we have a problem. From first glance, the best bed position appears to be this area here. But there's a window over here which would put the bed head right under the window. Even so, it is still better than the original location of the bed uh, indicated in this floor plan because this position actually makes the bed head share a wall with uh, the common toilet. At the same time, it is exposed to this protruding wall that cuts into the bed. Now that I take a closer look, I think it's better to just seal this window and then leave the bed over in this area. Anyway, there's, a, there's still a window here which would not leave the room windowless. This bed position would avoid the door's entry line, would avoid the sachet of this protruding wall, and avoid sharing a wall with the common bathroom. And once we remove this window, there's no window behind the bed head. This would be a good arrangement. Now as we move on to the upper floor, some of you might be thinking, where's the formula feng shui? Where are the flying stars, the eight mansion, the shen kung ta kua, and all this stuff, where are they implemented on this property? Well over here we're just looking at the interior forms first. If you cannot settle the interior forms, then there's no point looking at formula feng shui. Alright, now we're at level 2 of the house. On this level 2, there are two bedrooms, both of which have their own bathroom, and then an extra room over here, which is used for storage space. We're going to do this bedroom first, and then we'll finish it off with the master bedroom. Okay, you can see that there's a sloped ceiling in this room. Usually for slopes and ceilings, uh, it's best to do a false level ceiling so that it levels off uh, the top of the room and removes the sloping area. If we are unable to build the level false ceiling, then the obvious place for the bed will be here. This even though the bed head will be sharing a wall where the staircase is on the other side. And even with the bed in this space, it's going to be under attack by the bathroom door. So what the homeowner can do is to actually install curtains at the door here. Now the curtains have to be at least until below the knee. And if it's a low height bed, then the curtain has to go at least below the height of the mattress. Otherwise, the sleeping area will still be under attack by energy emitting from the bathroom here over here. Okay, ideally, I still see that the better position for the bed will be over this area here, the original area. This is provided the level false ceiling can be built. Now, as you see, if the bed remains in this area, uh, it will be under attack by the bathroom door. So what we can do is to build a wall, extend this wall, so that the bed area is protected from the energy from the bathroom. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now I move on to the master bedroom, which is a disaster area. The moment I saw the layout of this master bedroom, I was thinking, oh my god, why would someone design the layout of a bedroom like this? I'll show you what I'm saying. Firstly, look here, this is another energy tunnel that runs right through the house. From the front windows to the back window, it actually cuts across the bed in the master bedroom. There's also a sloped ceiling area over here. It starts at a higher level here and down to this wall over here. 
Now I don't know what's the height the slope starts from, so it's hard to say whether the door can be moved around. But let's just say that the level 4 ceiling can be built and the door can freely move around uh, along this wall. A better location for the door would be along this wall here. Then we'll seal up this area so that the wall opens from this area. Now there's a few reasons why this is a better position for the door into the bedroom. If we retain this current door, then the door is under attack from the corner of the staircase. Whereas if we move the door to this area, that means the door will open the staircase. That's not auspicious. So the best location of the door is actually here, provided the slope ceiling allows this door to be placed here. But even so, a slope ceiling above the door is still not good. So that's why this is a quite problematic bedroom. There's even more. If you look at this storage space, the only access into this area is via the master bedroom. So essentially, this is a room within the master bedroom. This is a recipe for infidelity in the household. And in fact, with the current placement of the bed, the foot of the bed is facing the door into this area. This is one of the worst configurations that you can have for bed placement. Then we have the bed head sharing the wall with the bathtub and the shower area of both bathrooms. Now, no matter how we flip this, this is a bad bedroom to begin with. If it's within my power, I will demolish this whole place and rebuild the whole level 2 of the house. If you want a solution, I can make some suggestions, but in the end, it will still not be very good feng shui. Okay, firstly, you should build a door over here, a door that is hidden with the wall, so that unless someone lives here and knows this over here, no one will be able to. And basically, this is the only possible position for the bed. Any other position would be worse than this area. That's not saying that this is a good area. This is already a very bad area. A solution that the homeowner might want to consider is to use a canopy bed. Because a canopy bed will be able to offer some form of protection against all this hostile energy within the room. So if you're a home buyer and you come across this house and you're thinking whether you should buy it, if you ask me, I will say look for another one. It is best that home seekers try to avoid such layouts in the first place. Home street problems like this are better prevented than resolved. Well, that's all for this video. Which area interests you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can also join me on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you again soon.